Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to walk you through all the steps to create um, rounded shapes within SketchUp Free. Now a lot of people don't know how to do this but it's actually a pretty simple process and we use a pretty simple tool in it. I'm going to go through some examples so then I've kind of covered all the kind of shapes you might want to make using this tool and hopefully it helps you. So let's crack on and let's jump into SketchUp right now. Okay, so I'm in SketchUp now and I'm just going to show you the examples we are going to and create in this uh, quick video. So um, we've got a sphere here, we've got a kind of cone shape, um, we've got a more technical shape here, which could be like a bed post, a banister rail. We've got like a kind of glass uh, here. We've got a ring, and then we've got a more, more abstract shape in this kind of like, well, I don't even know what that shape is really, but I've just drawn it. But yeah, I'm gonna walk you through all of these shapes and hopefully you understand how the tools work and how we can build this in SketchUp Free. So let's start from the beginning with the sphere. Okay, so I've just opened up a fresh SketchUp file and the first thing I'm gonna do is just draw a rectangle uh, to act as kind of a floor for my model. Uh, you don't need to do this, but I, I do like doing this uh, when I start new models. I'm just gonna make that a group as well so I don't um, mess up the faces. So for the sphere, what we're going to need to do is essentially just use the circle tool. So if you press C on your keyboard, the circle tool should come up. If you, if you don't have that shortcut, um, you can just come to the rectangle part and then come down to circle here. So you click on the circle tool and then I'm just going to draw a circle. Um, and this is going to be the act like how we rotate our shape around. So it just needs to be essentially bigger than this, the, the object we're going to create. So I'm going to put it about here like that. So I've created a circle and then from there I'm going to grab the line tool or L on my keyboard and I'm going to draw from the center and I'm going to make sure I'm on the blue axis by pressing the up arrow and I'm just going to draw a line to about there. Now again this doesn't really matter how high you draw that line just it's got to have enough room in it to create your shape. So from there I'm just going to grab the circle tool again and I'm going to come to about here uh, probably say about here and now I'm on the green axis so this is kind of like a side on view and this is basically the profile of our sphere and what we want to do now is just erase uh, this, this part and we can also get rid of this line uh, like that okay so that's basically our setup now um, for us to use this tool here which is called the follow me tool um, and, and it's hidden under the push pull um, it's hidden under the push pull tool but it's just called follow me. And what I like to do is basically double click your circle beneath, and then we're gonna click the follow me tool, and then we're gonna click the face we want it to um, revolve. So I've clicked that and you can see we've got a, a perfect sphere. Now obviously there's, you can see there's kind of segments in the sphere. Um, you can see these kind of bumps here, and that's basically due, due to how smooth our initial curve was. So if you want a smoother circle, you just have to increase the amount of curves um, that are in your original circle, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does make sense. So that's our sphere. We can then triple click that and just make that a group and we can move it to one side. So for our cone shape, we're basically going to do the same, the same kind of um, uh, process. So I'm going to draw a circle on the red axis uh, like that. And then I'm going to grab my line tool, go from the center, and we're going to draw again on the blue axis. And then I'm going to use the rectangle tool to create almost like a little, a little flag uh, on this kind of pole. And this is basically going to act as the face for us to draw, you know, our profile on that we want to then revolve around our circle. Now to do this, uh, to create our cone, I'm going to just grab the line tool, come from one end uh, to the other. And then I'm going to get rid of this excess, uh, these excess parts, and then I can get rid of this line. Now to revolve it um, the same way we did as the sphere, I can double click on the circle again, click on my revolve tool, and then uh, click on our, our cone like that, and you'll get your finished cone. But what I want to show you is that you can actually, if you don't select uh, that bottom circle and you just uh, grab the follow me tool and then just click once, You'll see that you can kind of trace um, the uh, the profile beneath it, so we can actually trace around our circle. So this is quite useful if you wanted, to say, half a cone. Um, you could do that, or even you know three quarters of a cone. You could do that as well, like that. Um, obviously, you're going to get some clipping issues there, 
and that will be down to how many segments on your your original circle that you've drawn beneath it so if you want a smoother shape with less less clipping problems um, basically you just need to up the amount of sides on your circle but I'm gonna keep mine um, as a full sphere so I'm gonna double click on my uh, on my circle sorry as a full cone and then I'm gonna click on here once oh that's not going right double click on that click on this click on that once and we have our cone now I'm just going to group that again and just move it to the side. Okay, now to create something a little bit more complex, we are still going to use the same process, uh, but it's going to be, yeah, just a little bit more complex of a shape. So again, I'm just going to start from our circle and then I'm going to grab my line tool, draw a line on the blue axis, and then I'm just going to draw a rectangle again, except this time it is on the green axis. Okay, so now if you wanted to draw something more, you know, more technical, like uh, like a doorknob or um, a banister rail, anything like that with kind of more organic shapes, uh, basically you just need to draw the profile of your shape. So I'm just going to draw some lines in for now, and then I'm going to create some curves on these these points, and you'll see um, the kind of shapes I can create. So if I grab the uh, the curve tool, uh, if I just uh, create some simple curves on our shape we could do something like that we could do one inward and then we could do one more from there to there and that could be outward a little bit like that so all I need to do then is and just make this a singular face so I'm just gonna erase some of these lines like that and then um, I'm just gonna erase this as well actually I'll just press the E on my keyboard there to pop up the eraser so I'm basically gonna do exactly the same thing as before. I'm gonna double click on this, click my follow me tool once, and then just click on our shape. And there you go. We've created this kind of more, uh, you know, banister rail, doorknob kind of shape. Um, so this can be applied to anything um, that kind of like round, almost like, been, it's, like it's been made on a lathe essentially. So that is that kind of shape um, for you there. So now I'm going to make a wine glass. Um, this time I'm going to make it, I want to create a more smooth wine glass. So when I draw my initial circle, I'm actually going to up the sides to, um, let's say 90, 96. 96 is a good number because, um, I don't know, I'm not really sure why, but I just like to use 96. So again, I'm just going to draw on my face. Um, and now you can see we've got a much smoother circle. So before the circles had quite a low number of segments, but now um, we've upped the segments. You can see we've got a much smoother circle. So now I'm going to draw again a line from the center of my circle on the blue axis. I'm going to create my rectangle from this endpoint on the green axis. Uh, so about there. And then I'm gonna basically just start drawing the profile of my wine glass. So let's say we start from about here. And then we're gonna come to about here. Now this is gonna be the kind of stem of the wine glass. And then I'll, initially I'm just gonna draw a kind of box to frame where we want to add our curves uh, and things like that. So now if I grab my, um, my curve tool, my two point arc. I'm gonna basically just draw an arc from here to here. And we're gonna try and get that on tangent like that. Can get rid of this now. And then if I wanna basically offset this line, I'm gonna do that using the offset tool, which is, um, it's under the push pull tool. And we can just offset this by, I mean, a wine glass isn't that thick, but for this example, we'll offset it to about, about there. And then what I want to do is just close off um, these edges. That means that when we revolve it, we're not going to, um, you know, get uh, the inside. The inside won't be filled up, essentially. So we're going to have a, a kind of an empty interior of our wine glass like that. So I'm going to erase these. And then wine glasses tend to kind of, you know, taper inward. So I'm just going to just kind of cheat it a little bit and just use the move tool. We're going to kind of move it in a little bit like that. So this is going to be a quite a big, big glass, um, but you know you can always basically adjust your your kind of flat drawing. And I recommend you know you could just 
make a copy of this before you actually revolve it. Um, so you can always come back and edit it, which is um, obviously very handy to do. I'm just gonna add a little, uh, little detail there on the end of that part like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna do the same as before. I'm gonna double click our circle. I'm gonna come to my revolve, sorry, um, follow me tool and click once and hopefully we'll get a glass. Okay, so that took a little bit of time and um, SketchUp had a little hissy fit, but um, you can see that we've got quite a chunky glass here. <laughs> it's not quite like the example I made before, but it's, um, you can see we've got a kind of an inside here so we can actually, um, you know, look into the glass, which is kind of cool. Um, what I tend to do is just, add, let's just add a, um, you know, kind of a glass uh, texture to it so you can kind of, you know, see the uh, see-throughness of it. So actually we probably wanna just make that group first. And then if I just use the see-throughness. There you go, you can see the kind of inner um, cut of the glass and you can see we've got an external wall. So that is how we make our glass. Okay, so the next shape is gonna be slightly different. It's gonna be our ring shape. Now this time when we use the circle, we want to actually make it the size we want our our um, object to be so I'm gonna make it um, you know just for this example about about 350 we can even type it in 350 radius um, which is good and instead of revolving above our circle we're actually gonna revolve on the line so we're gonna actually follow this line around to create our kind of donut shape so to do that we draw our circle like we've just done and then we're actually gonna put another circle um, from the center so if we line up to the center, we're gonna come onto the edge like that. And then we can just make it as big as, or as small as we want. I fancy doing kind of a chunky one. Let's see if this works today. Um, so that is basically, we've got a circle on our other circle. And you know what, I'm just gonna hide this floor so we can uh, kind of see what's going on a bit, bit easier. So now if I do the same, if I just delete that um, inner circle, and then if I, double click on our, our our ring that we want it to be traced on and then click on the follow me tool and then click on our circle. We should create a, a donut shape. Okay, and there we have our donut shape. Again, if you use a lot of segments in your, your base circle, it's gonna take a little bit of time to create your shape. So that's the only problem with SketchUp free. It doesn't seem to have much horsepower. Um, but yeah, we've created a really smooth donut there, which is really cool. So that is kind of how you um, use the, the tool in that kind of different way. Next, I'm gonna show you the kind of more extreme squiggly thing that you can create, um, but that should be very useful too. Okay, so for the final shape, uh, this is gonna be very useful for any pipes or any kind of um, fluid a kind of objects you want to create in SketchUp. Now this could be like a banister rail on a set of stairs, uh, anything that's kind of got a profile that wants to follow a path, um, this is the way we're gonna use the follow me tool. So first off, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle and this is gonna be on the green axis and this is kind of gonna act as the template for um, where we want our path to follow. So this is gonna be basically the line we want that our, our circle or square or whatever shape you wanna use to follow. So I've drawn a uh, simple uh, blank canvas essentially for us to draw our path. And I'm just gonna draw the line tool and just make sure I'm on the face at all times um, like that. Now you can draw kind of whatever path you want. It doesn't have to be uh, the same as mine. So I'm just going to draw a kind of shape for a for an example for you guys and I'm going to come down to about there. So that is a path that's a separate uh, separate face as you can see and what I'm going to do is just add some curves into this um, because I think that looks a bit nicer and you'll kind of get an idea of um, the kind of geometry and shapes you can create using this uh, technique. So the one thing is you want to be careful about uh, these angles if these angles um, become too tight, the, your profile might not be able to uh, go around it, which actually can be quite annoying. So just be aware of that. Um, but we should be all right uh, if we add a few curves like that. And then say if we curve down to about here, and then we'll go straight down there and then we'll add a nice kind of subtle curve here. Like that, and then I guess we'll try and curve into here a little bit more. Like that, a little bit more organic. And now I'm just gonna erase all the lines that I don't want. That, that, get rid of that. 
Okay, so that is kind of the shape. It's a bit of a random shape, but um, we're gonna use that for our, our profile. So I'm gonna basically just erase these outer edges, which I don't need. And then what I'm also gonna do is just erase uh, this bottom edge. Now, this is where you draw your profile. So I'm gonna use the circle, but you can use a square. You can use basically any profile you want. Just be aware of any tight angles you might run into um, issues. So I'm just gonna try it on our circle and see what happens. So I'm gonna make it about that kind of radius. And then I'm gonna double click on, uh, sorry, triple click on my line and then use the follow me tool and just click on our face. And hopefully we'll get a, a nice um, shape, an interesting shape. So there we have it. Our shape has actually traced around our path and we've got this kind of very strange shape, but um, that's just an example of what you can do. Again, this is good for any kind of like drain pipes or anything like that when you've got kind of fluid um, shapes that you want to create. Okay, so hopefully that showed you all the ways we can use the uh, follow me tool in SketchUp 3. And we've created some really cool shapes. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can apply this to your projects. Uh, if you've found the video useful, please drop me a like, it would help me out. Um, and if you wanna see any full lessons on um, like interior design, um, we've got some V-Ray, I've got a lot of different lessons on my Skillshare page. So if you use the link below, um, you get one month free. But yeah, hopefully that has shown you all the SketchUp Pre basics to create these kind of interesting shapes. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.